Let's take a look at how to set up Maxwell online to start tracking a printer. These instructions will assume that you have a Maxwell account set up already and you know your Maxwell username and password. You can browse to Maxwell through the Chromix website, but it's probably easiest to just type in MXWell in your internet browser. That will automatically get you to the Maxwell site. If you don't know your username and password, you can always click on Forgot Password and have Maxwell email the user information that is associated with your email address. I will log in as a demonstration user called Paul Maxwell. Paul has a number of devices and tracks already. Yours will be pretty empty if you're trying this for the first time. Everyone will need the latest Maxwell client, so if you don't have that yet, you can download the client from the links here once you log in. Everything in Maxwell begins with a device. A device is usually a printer, but it can be a measuring instrument or an environmental instrument like a thermometer or barometer. It could even be a monitor a display. So the first thing is to enter your printers into the system as devices. I'll make a new device called Epson 9900. That is my proofer number one. The red highlighted fields are required for you to fill out. The others are optional. Let's see, this is an Epson. You'll find that we have most of the instruments from most manufacturers in the system already. If you don't find what you need, you can always add a new one by clicking on the blue plus sign. So here we have our Epson proofer device in the system. Now we need to add a track to this printer. Tracks are usually named according to the paper or media that you print on the printer that you want to keep track of. You might have a matte paper, a glossy, a luster. This one will be the track for my 100 pound cover sheet. Note that you can slide the panes along the rail here by clicking and dragging the title bar to move things around to get more room. And now for the reference set. Every company needs to know if the kind of printing they're doing requires them to be matching to a particular industry standard or will they want to compare to some kind of in-house reference that they come up with themselves. Maxwell can do it either way. For example, some labs may want to proof to Grackle 2013 or another lab might have a press that they want to keep from drifting. So they'll want to compare to that press after it's been calibrated and running well, after it's golden run. If you're going to track yourselves against an industry standard, then it's pretty easy because we have several built in. These three reference sets at the top are built in, so you'll see them in your list. Well, let's say I'm proofing to Grackle 2006. I select that and I'm good to go. These built-in ones have the color aim, the reference already set, and the metrics, tolerance is already set. So that's about all there is to it. Some of the other options on this track details page you don't need to worry about for now. When we get to printing a pass-fail label when you're measuring with the client app on your own computer, then you can use this to choose which kinds of labels or reports get printed out. Here's some more detail about what we call a reference set. This public one is all set, so you can't change anything, but this gives you an idea of what a reference set consists of. You have a color aim, which is what you probably think of as a reference, what you're aiming for. Here's a sample of the metrics you can use, and metrics include the tolerances that make the all-important determination of when you are out of tolerance. In this case, this is set to throw a failure if the average delta E is over three delta E off compared to the color aim. In order to be notified if a track falls out of tolerance, you will want to set up a notifier. Find the little exclamation point button in the track details. This will send an email to you and whoever else you want notifying them that this track is out of tolerance. There are a few options for what you choose to be the trigger for the emails. Some like to be notified if any new measurements are taken. In this case, I'll choose tolerance failure, so I'll get an email when a new measurement fails. OK button. Then I give it a name that makes sense to me when I get the email. 
I can also add more emails to this notifier if I have a boss or a consultant who would be interested in following the progress here. But it will email me for sure, and who I am is defined by which user has signed in and which email address is on the account for that person. So that is pretty much it. If this has answered your questions about how to get started with Maxwell, you can move on to the next video, which is learning how to use the Maxwell client. For now, I'm going to spend a little more time showing what measurements in a trend line look like and what diagnostics you can do with the measurements in Maxwell. Measurements usually are uploaded from the Maxwell client while you are measuring with your instrument. But we have an upload measurement button where you can just upload a measurement file directly into the track. You can choose the choose file button and browse to where the file is on your computer. Or I'll just click and drag my file onto the no file selected area. Upload file. Then you can check the measurements to see that it is uploaded. It takes a few seconds for Maxwell to process the data. I'll go ahead and upload a few more so we start to get a history. Once the files get processed, we start to see the results. Click on any of the measurements to get the details on that measurement. Note that for all these Maxwell panes, you can always click and drag the lower right corner to resize the pane. Also, it's important to know that each pane has a minimal view and can be enlarged to ex its maximized view, where you see more of the details here. You won't find a lot of information here if the file comes from some source other than the Maxwell client. Let's look at this other example. We collect a lot of information about the measurement if it's uploaded through the client. Here's an ISIS measurement using M2, the UV cut, a measuring aperture of 4.5 millimeters, reflective scan using a white backing, the operating system of the computer you're using. We even add environmental data if you have instruments for that. Back to our original track. Related items offers you different ways to view your colors. You can get a list of colors in the measurement and click any one of them to go into detail on the color. You can get a TVI graph. Solid colors gives you just the solids and overprints, white and black. This file uses lab data to define the colors, so it's lacking some information. Let's look at a measurement that was done with a spectrophotometer and contains all the spectral band information. Here we get a calculation of the density, and a close look at your paper white patch can tell you whether you have optical brightener in your paper or not. This blue hump shows that there is optical brightener fluorescing in this paper white. Back to our other track. Target view lets you see what your patches look like laid out as they were measured on your target print. This is the heat map function, which is very, very useful when used with a full page target. Using our digital press watch service, this gives valuable information about how cross sheet variation is showing up in your digital press. AB plot shows how the patches are dispersed across the color spectrum. For those familiar with color think, this is like looking down at a 2D gamut from the top. Result summary is a very useful place to go when your measurement has failed a tolerance and you want to know how to diagnose the problem. There is a summary of the metrics and how they passed or failed. Here we have a yellow warning on the paper white metric. There's a histogram showing how the delta E variations fell out. The patch to patch comparison is very useful. Each of these headings are orderable just by clicking on them. I like to click on the delta E column in order to order them according to the lowest to the highest, and then click again and they're ordered from the highest to the lowest delta E. Well, now we can see at a glance where the worst offenders are. We're mostly off in the paper white and the highlight areas with this file. You can also get all the details you need about how the reference lab values compare to the sampled measurement you just took. The delta L, A, and B columns are colored to give you a quick idea of where in the spectrum the color is off. Not only are these patches too light, they are also a bit yellow. 
let's take a look at a trend report. This one's not too exciting because we just started out with a few measurements and that are much the same. In your day-to-day -day use of Maxwell, you can expect to see some variation with different metrics going up and down. Let me pull up a sample of another trend report. Yeah, here's one with lots of current data. Looks like we were going along fine until three measurements ago when something bad happened. Click on the timestamp and it'll open up the details of that measurement. I'll go into the results summary. I'll click on the delta E column two times and I can tell right away that there was a problem with my cyans and greens being too dark and warm. That's kind of how this thing works. The latest measurement shows that we're heading in the right direction. But back to our new track. Let's say you want to create a new reference set, one that is not in the system yet. There are a couple of ways you can bring the pane into edit mode. You can double click one of these gray headings or you can click the edit button at the bottom of the pane. Click on the plus button to create and add a new reference set. A reference set contains metrics and tolerances and also what we call the color aim. There are an awful lot of things that go by the name of reference so we like to be more specific and call this a color aim. I'm moving up to the new three row control strip. So I'm going to choose the new Grackle 2013 color aim that is built in. I can give this ref set a name that means something to me in my company. Then I'll add a couple of metrics. Average Delta E. Let's take a look at some of the options you have for making metrics. Average, max delta E. You can track just the paper white of your media. Some people find that the worst 10% is a valuable metric that tells when a press is starting to go off tolerance. We also have newer metrics that are necessary for some of the new standards and European standards. You have a choice between Delta E2000 and Delta E76. 2000 is more accurate, but some standards require you to use Delta E76. Failure level is the point at which Maxwell will tell you the measurement does not pass. We can also track individual patches and colors if there's a certain color that you want to keep an eye on. I'll make another one for Max Delta E. Well, let's make a couple more. You will frequently want to track your paper white. Not only does this tell you when your paper has changed or you're using the wrong paper, this can also act as a way to tell how much variation is introduced by your measurement instrument. Not to bog you down with too much fancy stuff, but you can also assign a specific color to the lines on your trend reports. By default, Maxwell will assign a random color to each of the metrics in the trend line. But for something like paper white, it makes more sense to have it be a light gray color representing paper. So here you would plug in RGB values from 0 to 255. A nice uh, dull white would be around 200, 200, 200, separated by commas. Let's make one more. I'm going to call this C for cyan. This is how you can specify individual patches. Instead of negative one, I need to put in the CMYK values that represent this patch. So for cyan, I'm doing 100, 0, 0, 0, separated by commas. And I'll make a plot color that resembles cyan also. Now we'll add another measurement and see how these new metrics do. I have a variation on the previous measurements that I will add in. Upload measurement. And when the file is finished processing in Maxwell, I can check the trend report and see that, yes, the new cyan metric is now there and it's pulling out the distance that the cyan patch is from the color aim. We have a few more metrics that are just over the line in terms of failure, and I can go into that timestamp and take a closer look at the measurement 
Maybe look at the results summary to find out what's wrong. Now that you know your way around Maxwell Online, it's time to see how to use the Maxwell client on your own station to measure and upload into Maxwell automatically.